If you're looking at your calendar wondering what travel will look like in 2021, join the club. We all know the travel and tourism industry took a massive hit last year thanks to the pandemic, but here's a number for you, 1.1 trillion. That's the dollar estimate from the World Tourism Organization in terms of global travel loss last year. So just how has travel changed and what trends can we expect this year? Well, joining us now with his thoughts is travel expert Lauren Christie. Lauren, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. All right, I'm just gonna throw it out at you. What can we expect in 2021 from the travel industry? Well, I think the travel industry, in lockstep with uh, government health officials, you're going to expect a lot more uh, or a lot of proactivity and a lot of transparency, but even accelerated, because really they've been very good about health and safety protocols and, and communicating what that is to the traveling public. But there's a there's a definitely a confidence issue out there right now. And so when the time comes for the recovery of this very important industry, um, they're going to have to be very clear and very together on what the speed and schedule of that recovery is. Uh, and as far as the traveling public is concerned, you know, a recent Expedia survey said, that uh, of North Americans said that most people are looking to maybe consider start traveling in April, but it's more likely going to be the summer before people want to get out and travel again. But uh, all of those factors have to come together to ensure that we do have a travel industry in 2021. All right. Well, what about where people will travel? You're thinking that this summer is going to feel a lot like last summer. How so? Well, I just think it's it's a domestic focus. It's, it clearly is. And, you know, there was a record number of purchases of RVs and boats and bikes and fishing equipment. And people are going to want to make use of all that. Uh, and then in conjunction, like I said, the government, you know, when the time is right and things are safe, is going to be very proactive about trying to help recovery for this industry. So the Ontario government, for example, has already announced that in 2021, they're going to be offering a tax credit in the form of a travel incentive to get Ontarians to travel in Ontario. And I think you'll see similar campaigns roll out across the country. Well, let's talk about international travel because it's it's definitely going to look different for those who decide to go that route. That is really the crystal ball. I mean, I think the only constant uh, is going to be change. And, you know, I think if you're thinking about international travel this year, definitely push it toward the back end of the year. And even if so, just be ready to be flexible. I mean, just look at today, for example. We're going to find out later whether flights from the UK are going to be continuing to be banned. Tomorrow is the start of a new um, COVID testing, uh, pre-arrival COVID testing from the Canadian government. And a month ago, most of us didn't even know of any of those things. Uh, Lauren, I'm going to ask you to look beyond 2021 now. What permanent changes do you want to see in terms of travel? Things that we've had to deal with today that we've had to we've had to pivot that you want to keep. Well, I think I, I think what we are going to see, uh, and, and I agree, a lot of them are very positive. I think you're going to see, you know, safe and safety and health regulations are going to be turned into hygiene standards. So, for example, I think you're going to see a plane. Um, when you're on a plane, you're going to see a mask on a plane from now on. I think hygiene standards are going to become are going to become typical. Um, technological advances in terms of um, you know the rapidity that we see them in the travel industry. You know, people want more contactless methods. So whether that's pay methods or mobile key apps or um, QR codes for menus or even audio tour books or whatever that looks like, I think you'll see a lot of that. I also think we should expect to see health regulations in some destinations become part of a visa requirement, even if it's in the form of a vaccination card. I think down the road, we are going to see changes to things like that. Um, and then one of the silver linings I, I truly believe out of all this is that it's th this halt in travel has given a lot of destinations the ability to step back, take a breath and look at themselves. And there are a number of places around the world that were suffering from over tourism for sure. And I think, you know, the traveling public for one isn't necessarily going to be comfortable being in massive crowds for the new foreseeable future. But on the other hand, I think these destinations themselves are going to start limiting uh, the number of tourists that come in. They, they want to protect their locals. They want to protect their infrastructure. And I think we're going to see some positive changes come out of that. You know, Venice, as an example, uh, is talking about limiting the number of tourists it's going to allow in the city from now on. And there are a number of ports around the world that have talked about maybe we don't need that many cruise ships. So I think all of that will come out in the wash this year, but that will be what we see in the future going forward. Uh, Lauren, your, your expertise is, uh, is really a, a, a wonderful thing. Thank you so much for sharing it today. Thanks, Ben. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.